Hello everyone, this is Misha Houston and I'm here to do my review of If Loving You Was Wrong. Tonight's episode is entitled Rock Solid. And I have to say that it was a rock solid episode. I, I really enjoyed this one. The confrontations were very meaty and very juicy and I very much appreciate that. Uh... I apologize for getting this out so late, but hey, you know, it's, it's been a busy schedule for me. But I am here to do the review, and I have to say again that I so enjoyed this episode. Uh, I wish that all of the episodes were like this. I s saw a lot of story movement, and, and I appreciate that. I appreciate a, a very even very smooth episode and this exact this was one this was exactly what i was wanting all season to be like and it feels like it's gearing up for a wonderful season finale i think the season finale will be in about two weeks and uh, i look forward to it i look forward to next week's episode and the season finale so thank you so much tyler perry for giving us a wonderful episode this week I enjoyed watching this more than I enjoyed the haves and the have-nots. So, for this week, uh, this is definitely my favorite of the two episodes. And uh, I hope to see more episodes like this, you know, for the, last few, for the last few weeks. So, thank you all so much for watching my video. The episode is entitled Rock Solid. And here we go. The first group of people we go to is Alex, Brad, and Dr. Ralston. Now, we pick up right where we left off. Alex is in bed folding clothes while Brad is standing there asking her a question. He asks her who was it on the phone. Now, we all know that she wanted to lie to him and make up some kind of foolish, false story. But she does tell the truth and says that it was Dr. Rawson on the phone calling in regards to Marcy. Marcy, you know, is having problems with her pregnancy and she had asked for Brad to be there with her to help her through it. Now, um, Brad is concerned for, for uh, Marcy and he gets on the phone to talk to, you know, to try to talk to Dr. Rawson. He, he calls for Marcy, but she's not picking up the phone. And then he calls for Dr. Austin, and apparently she isn't picking up the phone either. Now, as this is going on, Alex is visibly upset. She's, you know, trying to make up excuses for him not to go. She says that, uh, that Marcy will be fine, and uh, she's making up all these excuses and he's asking her questions as well he's asking for dr rawson's number but she continues she starts right back with her lies saying that the number uh was deleted off of her phone by accident and he doesn't and she doesn't know the number you know she's putting up these roadblocks and she's reluctant and she's making all these veiled statements you know, she just doesn't want Brad anywhere near Marcy, and it's very apparent. And uh, Brad is just telling her, yeah, I'm going to go and see Marcy. Now, he eventually gets a call from Dr. Rostin, and Dr. Rostin tells Brad that Marcy is in the hospital, and, and she is having problems with her pregnancy, and she has asked specifically for Brad to be there with her. He understands, and then he hangs up the phone, you know, ready to go on to the hospital. Now, Alex is, as I said before, very upset. She's putting up roadblocks, trying to make herself and make him, you know, not go, not go to the hospital. She obviously doesn't want him to go. Uh, then she says, when she realizes that Brad is going to the hospital, she says that maybe I should go with you. And makes up these makes up these excuses, saying that uh, maybe I can go to comfort her. But Brad is looking at her, saying that the that is the last thing that Marcy needs right now. She's uh, she brings up the possibility of leaving the kids with Natalie, but he shoots that down as well, saying that she, that Natalie is taking care of her three kids plus Kelly's son. 
And it, it's just really obvious that Alex does not want, you know, Brad going, but Brad, you know, is set on going. Now, after he leaves, she calls, you know, for the babysitter. She needs someone to watch over the baby so she can go chase after Brad and try to, you know, put a block between those two. She calls up her babysitter, you know, out of the blue, and, and the babysitter does agree to come over and watch the baby while she goes to the hospital to try to keep eyes on Brad and Marcy. The next group of people we go to is Natalie, Lucian, and Esperanza. Now, Natalie and Lucian are in the kitchen, and Lucian is about to go on to work. But before he can go, she stops him and tells him that uh, we haven't spent much time together, and he eventually agrees with that. She tells him how much that she loves him and how much she appreciates him. She's thinking about this horrible situation that they are all in. And she's thinking about the people in it. She goes down the list of all of the men that uh, she knows and that are a part of this situation. She says that Eddie is nothing but an asshole. And Randall is a horrible person. And Brad, you know, for the good man that he is, is very much lost. And Travis was nothing but a devil. But she compliments Lucian and tells him that he is a rock-solid person, that he doesn't lie to her or cheat on her, that uh, he has been her rock through this. And, he, and Lucian really has. I totally and fully agree with that. He's most likely the most level-headed of our characters. He's had some angry moments, but he's always kept his head. And Natalie sees that and very much appreciates him for that and loves him even more for that. Uh, Natalie and Lucian, you know, kiss and they canoodle with each other and they're very happy. They're very much the love couple of this of this episode and of the series. And it's really, really good to see the two of them doing so well. It really is. Um, they're kissing and they're canoodling and they're holding each other and they're flirting and they're thinking about going on to bed, you know, going back to bed with each other before he goes off to work. But then there's a knock on the door and it's Esperanza. Now, as Esperanza walks in, she sees, you know, how lovey and how warm and friendly they were with each other and she picks up on it. Lucian says that he has to go to work and then they trade I love you with each other and they smile and they flirt, you know, with their eyes and then Lucian goes off to work. Now, after Lucian leaves, Esperanza, you know, picks up on the awkward situation that she had just walked into and she wanted to call Lucian back, but Natalie says, no, don't call him back. He needs to go on out to work and pay for this place and so on and so forth. They discuss Natalie going back to work, but she's decided not to. She's enjoying being the housewife. She took a few days off to get settled into the new house and she's, you know, decided at least for now not to go back to Burger Fats. Now, they talk a little bit about Kelly and their situation and uh, they talk a little bit about Justice as well. Now, Justice, you know, isn't doing so well without his mother. You know, he's just a young boy and he's confused and he doesn't understand what's going on. And they are both, you know, lamenting about Kelly's situation and wanting things to be better for Kelly. Now, Natalie notices that Esperanza is sad and she's looking at her phone. And they discuss, you know, their relationship, you know, Esperanza's relationship with Stephen. Esperanza says that uh, she went to dinner with him last night, but decided the next morning to break it off with him. And she's telling Natalie that uh, it was the right decision. But Natalie, you know, doesn't believe that. The doubt in is, is in Esperanza's face, and she's holding on to her cell phone, hoping that Stephen would call. So uh, Esperanza, you know, doesn't really want to talk about it uh, and then she decides to leave. And uh, before they leave, they talk a little bit more about Justice. And Natalie believes that Justice should see Kelly. And Kelly should be the one to tell him exactly what's going on here. He's confused. He doesn't understand. And for his sake, 
he needs to hear from her exactly what is going on with her. The next two people we go to is Kelly and Carl Adams. Now, Kelly is in the interrogation room when Carl Adams, her attorney, comes in. He is trying to push a deal on her, but she is not having that. He says that uh, the Kane family doesn't want to go through a lengthy trial, and Kelly should take the deal. The deal is life for both crimes. And she is telling him that this is not, this is not true. I am not the one who, who is responsible for all of this. It was Travis. It was Travis who was stalking her. It was Travis who started this entire situation. And that she is not guilty of, of the crimes that are leveled against her. Now, he presents her with evidence. He presents her with the phone records, but she says that that was all doctored by Travis. He presents her with the bank records, and she says the same. And then he pulls out the tape. The tape is of a conversation between her and Randall that she had last week while she was in the cell. And on that tape, it says that... Uh, she would kill Travis. I mean, it, she plainly and openly admits that uh, it was her who killed Travis. And with all of this evidence, he sees no way out. He thinks that she should just take the deal. He's trying to convince her, but she is not hearing any of it. She's telling him multiple times that it was Travis who did this. He was stalking me. He is the one who did this to me. He was the one who who killed Ramsey in the first place, but the lawyer, you know, just doesn't see any way out. He, you know, is, is uh, saying that there's no way that you can prove that you did this. Now we all know Kelly's financial situation. She is unable to pay for a lawyer because her funds were, she was the victim and her funds were taken away from her, you know, through bank fraud by Travis you know, just another uh, harassment of Travis to Kelly. But she has no way of proving. It's just her word against theirs. And things aren't looking really good for Kelly. She gets angry and she gets upset. And she fires Carl Adams. She does not want him as her attorney. And she says that she wants a lawyer that's willing to work for her. Now, I, I do feel bad for Kelly in this situation. I totally and totally understand, but uh, she really needs help right now. And I don't want her to take a deal either because she didn't kill Ramsey. She is not guilty of that crime and Travis was after her. And there is evidence out there, but Larry, you know, stopped in from giving up the evidence. So um, I'll, I will be discussing this subject again later on in my review when I get to the specific storyline. The next group of people we go to is Randall, Ian, and Lucian. Now, Ian is at his law office when Randall comes in whining and acting like some sour old twat. Now, Randall comes in, he's very upset. He is very angry about what happened last night at the restaurant. He's very, very upset about this, and he's rambling on, acting like his usual obnoxious self. He's very rude to Ian, and he, but yet he expects Ian to help him out. He's also worried about the lawsuit, and he's also, because of the lawsuit, he's worried about Larry. Now, Larry, as we all know, has disappeared, and Randall is looking for him. He's looking for him because... Larry was the one that was was the one that was supposed to file the lawsuit, you know, against Brad. Now, as we all know, Ian was at the restaurant and bore witness to what happened and was a part of the situation. And Randall is very upset and he just wants to sue the hell out of everyone. I mean, I quote, I want to sue the hell out of everyone for what he did to me. You know, he, he's just wanting to hurt everyone because he has been hurt. 
But what Randall fails to realize is that he provoked that entire situation. He just can't admit that that entire situation at the restaurant stemmed from him. Now, Ian is tells him to sit down and relax and calm yourself and tell me exactly what's going on. Maybe I can help you. Uh, Ian asks him a series of questions. What are you talking about? What are, what are you doing here? What do you need? Do you need my help? And uh, Randall, you know, uh, says, yes, I want to sue everyone. I want to sue everyone for what Brad did. Now, Ian starts asking questions, and also Randall starts asking questions, too. He asks questions of Ian, saying, what were you doing at the restaurant? And Ian says, I was there all the time. I go there every day all the time. And he also asks about Marcy. And what's going on between the two of them. And Ian says that she sold me a house. And then he gets smart with Ian. And Ian says, uh, I only go out, you know, when they're cute. I only go out with the people who sell me houses that are cute. You know, he's trying to act like the jealous husband. And, and trying to pretend that Marcy and Randall, Marcy and Randall himself are still married. But it's only a marriage on paper. We all know that. Now, Ian, you know, offers to help Randall, you know, with the lawsuit, but I don't really believe that Ian is on Randall's side. I mean, I think he, he really wants to be on Marcy's side in this, but uh, he just tells Randall what he wants to hear, and uh, he says that he will help him out. Then the subject turns to Larry and his situation, and he also wants Ian to check up on Larry. Uh, Randall apparently is worried about Larry and wondering where he is. Now, uh, because of the attack on Eddie, Larry, you know, is in trouble now. And Randall knows that. He says that Larry pissed off a cop named Eddie, Eddie Willis, Ed Willis. And um, he is a very racist person. And I tried to pull a lawsuit against him. I mean... It seems to me that Randall just wants to sue everyone. Everyone has a lawsuit hanging over their head because of Randall. And uh, he's afraid, pretty much afraid for his life. He says that Eddie may have abducted him. And he just wants for Ian to check up on Larry and to see if he is okay. Ian does agree to do that. And before he leaves, Randall knocks over uh, cups and pencils and all kind of things on his desk just acting like some old twat but after after that situation is settled randall leaves the office i have to commend ian on being able to handle randall so well but i think he has a lot of experience dealing with crazy people because he's working for larry now after randall leaves Ian calls Lucian asking for help. He tells them the situation about Larry being missing. He doesn't know where he is, and Randall was there, and he was complaining about it. And Lucian says that I will try to track down Larry for him. Now, but before, you know, they can end the conversation, Ian says that Larry has been known to go on drug binges. And to abscond with other men and women and leave for days. So he wants all of that to be kept on the down low. Now, Lucian agrees to this, but there's a caveat. He has to help Kelly find a decent lawyer. And reluctantly, Ian decides, you know, to help Kelly, not by giving up the evidence, but to give a better lawyer for Kelly. The next group of people we go to is Larry, Eddie, and Lucian. Now, we pick up right where we left off with Eddie and Larry. Eddie and Larry are in the back of the box truck, and Larry is unconscious and still chained up to the wall. Then Eddie gets a phone call from Lucian, and Lucian is asking where he is and what he's doing. And uh, Eddie is, you know, is putting up his roadblocks and lying and saying that I don't know what you're talking about or what's going on. Then Lucian tells Eddie that people are starting to look for look for Larry and wonder where he is. 
But Eddie, you know, feigns ignorance as he always does and pretends like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Then Lucian starts to threaten starts to threaten him, threaten Eddie, and say that uh, he needs to be back here, you know, as soon as possible, or I'm going to get the police involved, I'm going to get the press involved, and all hell is going to come down on you. Now, uh, Eddie, as I said before, is feigning ignorance and saying that he doesn't know what he's talking about. And then Lucian is sitting at his desk, and he's looking at his computer, and he's asking, why are you at the, in the middle of nowhere standing next to a box truck? Apparently, Lucian has tapped uh, Eddie's cell phone, you know, to try to, you know, find out his location, knowing that he would lie to him. Now, uh, Eddie is very uh, surprised by this and saying, oh, you can't use this FBI shit on you. But Lucian says, I'm still building a case against you. So if you do have Larry, you need to get him back here quick because kidnapping is a federal offense. Now, before I go any further with this, I kind of want to say how hypocritical Lucian is being. I mean, he's very upset and hurt that Eddie has supposedly, supposedly kidnapped Larry. But Larry did the same thing to Eddie and he just let the whole matter go. I mean, he protects his friends and tries to bury his enemies. As much as I like Lucian, he's not, you know, an up-and-up cop. I mean, he helps who he wants to help, and then he, he, you know, doesn't do anything for someone that he doesn't like. You know, I mean, he's done it multiple times, and uh, I think that they may catch up with him later on. Now, back with the story. Eddie, you know, is in the box truck with Larry, and Lucian knows it. And Lucian tells him, point blank, you need to get him back here. He needs to be okay, or it's all going to come down on you. Now, after Eddie hangs up, he goes to Larry, who is still unconscious, and he pulls out his penis and starts to urinate on him to wake him up. He says, wake up, Larry. The game is over. Wake up. But Larry isn't moving. There's no reaction to him being urinated on. He's just laying there, still chained up to the wall. Eddie, you know, tries to wake him up again, but he is not moving. He grabs his head and looks at him and kneels down next to him. He takes his pulse, and he realizes that he may very well have killed Larry. I don't know if Larry is still alive or dead, but uh, he is not moving. He's he's completely unconscious at best. Uh, Eddie thinks that he may have killed Larry. And uh, I personally, even though I don't know for sure, I think that Larry is dead. I think that Eddie tortured him to death. Now, uh, Eddie is shocked by this. He says, dumbass lawyer, and puts his jacket over over Larry's face and leaves him there right there in the truck. He leaves him right there in the truck. He uh, he doesn't take his body anywhere. He just leaves him there strung up and chained up. Just, you know, just like Larry, you know, did with Eddie. Now, um, I don't think it was right, but uh, Larry started this with, with Eddie. He should never have attacked him. And if he is paying for this with his life, then I, I can't really feel too sorry for Larry. I, I'm sorry. I mean, I just can't feel any sympathy for him because he woke a sleeping beast by attacking Eddie. So we're going to have to see next week if Larry is alive or, or dead. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, he seems dead to me, but he may have just fell unconscious from the pain. The next group of people we go to is Brad, Ian, and Marcy. Now, Marcy is in the hospital in pain and worried about losing her baby. Brad comes in and, you know, immediately tries to comfort her. She's cradling her belly, and she's very, very afraid and very upset and is, is wondering what the doctors are doing and why aren't they speaking to her. And uh, she's so afraid and very terrified of, of having a miscarriage. She also starts to blame Randall for this, the stress that he has put her, put her under, and uh, also the curse that he laid. 
he is uh, very adamant that she is stressed out during, during the pregnancy. He made that very clear. And she blames him for the pain that she is in now. She tells Brad that he wanted me to miscarry. Now, Brad is doing his best to comfort her and try to keep her calm and still. And she's trying, you know, her best to remain calm and uh, wait for the news from the doctors. Now, as this is going on, her cell phone rings and it's in. And uh, she says that, oh, I had some papers to deliver to him and uh, just wanted to. Uh, to deliver the papers later after, you know, she comes from the hospital. Uh, she tells Brad to answer the phone, and Brad talks to him briefly and says that uh, she is uh, going, it's not the right time, and she's going to have to deliver the papers to him later on. Now, uh, Marcy uh, asks for, asks for the phone and, and speaks to Ian and tells Ian that she is in the hospital right now and is not able to bring the papers. Now, Ian is very concerned for her and wants to know exactly where she is. She, you know, tries to divert it and evade it, but uh, eventually Brad tells him that, that she is at the hospital on the fourth floor. And Ian, you know, goes immediately to leave his office and uh, goes to see Marcy. Now, before he goes to leave to see her, he calls his, uh, I'm assuming his secretary, and asks, you know, for the divorce papers and the divorce documents that was decreed for uh, Randall Holmes and Marcy. And he also asks about Larry, but um, no one has seen or heard from Larry. You know, Larry is uh, in a bad way right now. He may not even be alive. But uh, after he finds uh, that out, uh, you know, and uh, gets the documents in order, he goes to see Marcy at the hospital. The last group of people we go to is Randall, Alex, and the babysitter. Now, we are at Randall's house, and he's calling for Larry, leaving messages on his phone. But Larry is obviously not returning his call. He goes to his refrigerator and then he hears a beep from his computer. He sits down at his table and he looks at the computer and realizes that the camera that he installed on his porch that was facing Brad and Alex's house was still running even though Brad took it down. So he starts to look at the videotape and realizes uh, that Alex had the, the results doctored. Now, he immediately goes over to Alex's house and waits, you know, at the front door. Now, inside of Alex's house, she is talking to the babysitter, telling her that uh, we've got milk for him and his diapers are here and he's upstairs sleeping. And she thanks the babysitter for going on, you know, to come, you know, going on to take care of the baby while she's out. Alex goes to her front door and sees Randall standing there, and he is very, very upset. He almost looks like he's about to cry. He almost looks like he's about to cry. He is so upset. Uh, Alex just wants for him to go away and get off of her porch, but then he plays the tape, and she realizes that he has the evidence now that could bury her. He is very upset and wants to know exactly what is what is this? What's going on here? She tries to apologize, but he doesn't want to hear it. He just wants to know the name of the person that switched the DNA results. But Alex, you know, cannot tell him that because the truth is no one switched the results. It was just another one of her lies. She's trapped underneath the weight of her lie now. Now, Randall believes that her lie about switching the DNA results is true. He believes that that is his son and that she deliberately had the, the DNA results switched to, um, to fool him into believing that that's not his baby. Now, um, Randall is upset and just wants her to admit it. But Alex, you know, can't admit it. She can't admit to uh, doctoring the results, and she won't admit the name of the person who doctored the results. You know, as I said before, it was a lie that Alex told, and um, 
Dr. Ralston now is, is, is in jeopardy now because of Alex's lie, but she does not give up the doctor's name. Now, now Randall uh, is upset by this and threatens Alex, saying that I'm going to get the truth out of you one way or the other. If I have to go to my lawyers, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, he walks away from her and then... Uh, she is following him. She's begging him. She's, she's apologizing. She knows she's in trouble now. He's got some evidence, some bone hard evidence against her. And uh, she's, you know, she's begging. She's begging. She's pleading. She's saying that she's sorry. And uh, Randall doesn't want to hear it. Now, uh, he walks which I think was very much deliberate, back into the tool shed. He walks into the tool shed, and she follows him in there, and they're talking. And Alex is saying, you know, we both made mistakes here. We were both married, and we had an affair, and that was wrong. And uh, he, they go through all of their history with each other. He uh, says that uh, you sent your family to try to kill me. And she, you know, counters saying that uh, you were trying to take my baby away from me and I didn't know what else to do. And then he goes back to his normal threats. He's saying that, guess what? I'm going to give all this evidence to my lawyer and uh, pretty much uh, I'm going to have custody of the baby. Uh, she may even be facing criminal charges. And also, Dr. Ralston's reputation and career is in jeopardy now, as we're going to see in the preview. Now, um, they're going back and forth with each other. She's saying that she's sorry, and she just wants all of this to end. She's tired of this, this never-ending harassment, these threats, and she just wants it all to end. And he says it is going to end. You're going to be gone, and I won't have to see you every day. And my, the baby will be with me where he belongs. Then Alex, you know, she uh, she turns on her charm, her so-called charm, and tries to appeal to him, you know, on a sexual level. She's saying that, I know that you still want me. I know that you still care. Uh, I know that you're still attracted you know, to me, and, you know, she tries to, you know, manipulate him by using sex, she says that you can have me any way you want, but I just don't want to lose my baby, I don't want to go to jail, I don't want to lose Brad, and Randall is looking at her like, well, okay, fine, take off your clothes, and, and uh, Alex has this horrible, terrified look on her face, and that is the way the episode ends. Now, before I end it officially, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about Larry and his supposed death. Now, if he is dead, Kelly may have a chance at freedom. If he is dead, then Larry, then Ian will inherit the law firm. He'll become the senior partner. And maybe then, finally, he'll give up the evidence to the DA. And, and maybe then Kelly will go free. And I don't wish death upon him, but uh, if he does die, it will certainly help Kelly. Uh, also, in regards to the videotape, Randall only seen a small portion of it. But if you go back in the previous episodes, there's a lot more on that tape. That tape incriminates Lucian and Brad. Lucian covered up Brad's crime. Brad, you know, pushed him off the ladder, and Lucian covered it. And the and the camera was still running at the time. He has a lot of evidence now, more than he thinks. He only saw a piece of it. But if he sits down and really looks at that tape, he might could have a chance at suing Brad and having him incriminated and charged with the crime. And he may even have Lucian, you know, as well. Now, in the in the preview, we're going to see Natalie try to step up to Randall, and uh, he may have a weapon against her. With Lucian gone, you know, her rock, as she described Lucian as, may be gone as well. So we're going to have to see, you know, what's going, you know, how things are going to be. Uh, this is this is a very, you know, very crucial episode. A lot of... Uh, 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 things, you know, came to light here. A lot of issues came to light here. And this was an, an excellent episode. It kind of feels like a cornerstone episode. And it's certainly going to set the tone for the rest of the season. 
uh thank you all so much for watching my video i really really enjoyed doing this video i thought that uh, the episode was excellent an excellent episode very well written I, just enough scenes it wasn't convoluted you know with a whole bunch of scenes like the the episode uh uh, of the haves and the have-nots when there was 14 scenes this was only seven but these seven scenes were just excellent they were all excellent they all pushed the story forward and i just thought that it was a wonderful wonderful episode i have to commend tyler on this one my mvps of the episode is natalie and lucian because of their lovely scene that they had the, the best scenes the best written scenes i really really enjoyed that scene it's so nice to see them so in love and still committed and still strong especially when so many other couples around them are falling apart so for that i have named natalie and lucian my mvps of the episode uh the next episode will be entitled in god's hands and we're going to have to see, you know, the, the issues and how these issues are going to resolve themselves. I think that's a wonderful title for the next week's episode. Um, thank you all so much. If you like my video, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will be back next week with the next installment. Enjoy your life as I do. And have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.